It is now time for members' statements. I recognize the member for Perth Wellington. Thank you, Speaker, and welcome back to the Legislature. Over the summer, I had the opportunity to announce a proliferation of investments that our government is making in my riding of Perth Wellington, from $200,000 for local seniors programming, $300,000 for palliative care, $6.6 million for local hospital <coughs> capital funding, $3.4 million for local ERs and hospital bed capacity, $188,000 for local events and festivals, and $400,000 for our local police services. Speaker, this is all great news. But there is more. Since 2018, our government has secured $25 billion in auto and EV investments, $3 billion in life science investments. We have there's been 700,000 new jobs created, Speaker, including 40,000 jobs in the manufacturing se sector. In the skilled trades, apprenticeships are up 24 percent. Our students are entering the health care sector in droves, Speaker. Over 4,300 students have registered the Learn and Stay program. Our government continues to make historic investments in health care. We are increasing the land ambulance funding by 6 percent for our municipalities, increasing it to $811 million this, uh, total, Speaker. We're investing an additional $51 million in the dedicated off-nose nurses program, Speaker. Mr. Speaker, our government will continue to focus building a strong Ontario. When will the opposition get on board? Member statements. The member for Scarborough Southwest. Thank you very much, Speaker. Good morning, everyone. Speaker, I rise today to celebrate a momentous victory for the people of Ontario. Over the past weekend, my office organized a community call to action for the Green Belt, which turned into a beautiful celebration. This journey has been marked by grassroots organizing, passionate protests, petitioning, persistent questioning, and thorough investigation. It has demonstrated the power of citizen engagement and an unwavering commitment to protect something so precious to us Ontarians. Yes. I'm immensely proud of the tireless efforts of the countless individuals across the province who courageously stood up against the corruption that threatened our cherished green belt. This victory is a testament to the collective will of Ontarians who refuse to back down. It is, a crucial, it is also crucial to emphasize that the green belt land swap was never about solving the housing crisis. Instead, it exposed a lack of genuine commitment to addressing the pressing issues faced by Ontarians. And I want to extend my gratitude to the leader of Ontario's New Democrats, Mar Stiles, for her leadership and unwavering dedication to the cause and for calling for an independent investigation that uncovered the dishonesty and mockery perpetuated by Premier Ford's government. I also commend the talented journalist who played a and ask the member, I'm going to ask the member to withdraw the unparliamentary comments. Thank you. I also want to commend the talented journalist who played a vital role in this fight. The next member statement. The member for Whitby. Okay, good morning, Speaker. The government has provided the Durham Regional Police Service with $200,000 to expand its video surveillance program to better protect communities like Whitby and other parts of the region from gun and gang violence. The funding through the Ontario Closed Circuit Television Grant Program can be used to replace outdated equipment, expand or enhance current technology, and install new or additional CCTV surveillance cameras in areas where gun and gang violence, illegal drug activity, and human trafficking are prevalent. Speaker, the Durham Force is one of 24 police services across the province receiving funding, with more than $2.8 million being allocated. Durham uh, Police Service Chief Peter Morari had this to say, Speaker, about the grant. We value the continued support and investments in the CCTV program. We've already seen the benefit of these cameras as both a deterrent and a crucial investigative tool in solving crime and addressing gun and gang violence. Speaker, together with the Durham Regional Police Service, our government stands resolute in our fight against gun and gang violence, illegal drug activity, and human trafficking, ensuring a safer and more secure future for all residents in the region of Durham. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Niagara Centre. 
Thank you, Speaker. Over the summer, I had the opportunity to visit and speak with many of the hardworking farmers across Niagara. They grow a wide variety of strawberries, grapes, cherries, peaches, apples, and much more. However, they conveyed to me their deep concern for the future of this province's food security as Ontario loses 319 acres of farmland per day. For MZOs to plant highway expansions and greenbelt flip-flops, farmers' confidence in this government having their backs and protecting their land has been shattered. The farmers' right to farm is being put at risk. Over 861,000 jobs in this province are dependent on the agri-food sector, which currently contributes over $47 billion to Ontario's GDP. Just last week at the International Plowing Match and Rural Expo, farmers made clear that once this fertile land is paved over, developed and destroyed, it is lost forever. This would have catastrophic impacts for Ontarians as we would have to rely more on costly imports and supply chains. It's my hope that this government will recognize the important role local farmers play in Ontario's food security and support the Greenbelt Restoration Act. Thank you, Speaker. The next member's statement, the member for Niagara West. Niagara Thank you very much, Speaker. I am grateful to be able to advocate for the many hardworking men and women in Niagara West who make things and make things happen. I am proud to support risk takers and visionaries, the entrepreneurs who see opportunity and seize it, creating good jobs for so many in the communities of Niagara West. Speaker, I wish to share with the House two special success stories in the manufacturing and food processing sectors from my riding, both out of the town of Smithville in West Lincoln. In August, I was joined by the Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry in Smithville to congratulate the Rook Devine family and leadership team at Niagara Pallet on a successful grant through the Forest Sector Investment and Innovation Program. Our government is investing $1.8 million to help Niagara Pallet expand its production facility and install pallet-making equipment. This will increase the company's sales by 46 per cent and create 30 new jobs. Two weeks ago, I announced provincial funding through the Strategic Agri-Food Processing Fund for Highland Ridge in Smithville. The growing meat processing company is receiving up to $1.7 million to increase processing capacity. This project will include construction of an 18,000-square-foot facility, installation of meat processing equipment, including slicers, scales, metal detectors, smokehouses, grinders, and mixers. Through the hard work of the Young family and the Highland Ridge team, this new site will create over 20 new jobs for Niagara. We are focused on restoring one of Ontario's historic strengths, our manufacturing sector. With investments like these, more good-paying jobs in Niagara West are on the way. Thank you. The next member statement, the member from Mishkegawak, James Bay. Thank you, Speaker. Today is the Frank Ontarian Day, a day our, our, we raise our flags. And I ask all members to, to take the floor in France as I will be doing all day today. I, I'm delighted to talk about a Franco-Ontarian pride here in Queen's Park. Let's take the opportunity to remind everyone that our rights have to be protected by our provincial institution in, in, in the context where we have a, a shortage of qualified labor in French, where many school boards for Francophones are in a very financially precarious situation further marginalizing the francophone minority in the province. The government refused to fund a project with Canada, such as the University of Sudbury, and French language health services are increasingly difficult to find. You need more and more time to find uh, health care services and often have to travel very far away from home to get them. The huge shortage of family doctors and small francophone communities in the north are fighting to receive the same resources that those in the south receive. Every decision to refuse funding for a project is a huge blow to Franco Ontarians, and that jeopardizes the acquired rights of Ontario's francophones. Today and every day, let's protect the constitutional rights of the francophone minority in Ontario the right to have services in French. Thank you very much. Member statement. A member for Carleton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I would like to acknowledge the tireless and relentless work of two mothers who live in rural Carleton. 
Sherry Nixon of Osgoode and Jennifer Bugson of Munster are among the many parents in rural Ottawa who have had the lives of their families and their communities turned upside down because the Ottawa Student Transportation Authority was unable to secure school bus contracts for thousands of students living in suburban and rural Ottawa. Now, many families are facing difficult circumstances. They have to commute into the city of at least an hour for work, but they are left with no way to get their children to school. I'm proud of Sherry Nixon and Jennifer Bugden for wanting to do something about the problem. They organized Facebook groups, started petitions, spoke with class, dignity, and passion at my community barbecue on Saturday, September 9. They have stepped up to become valuable leaders in the community, joining me in the fight to get this situation resolved. They met with Minister Lecce in a Zoom call to make him fully aware of what families in rural Ottawa are facing. In, in addition, Jennifer has been engaging with the community to reopen Munster Elementary School, which was shut down by the Ottawa Carleton District School Board in 2015. The school's closure put a village full of children on school buses, while a beautiful and well-maintained building sat, has sat empty, with the exception of some weekly community events that take place on some evenings. Mr. Speaker, every riding in every community needs people like Sherry Nixon and Jennifer Bugden. The heart and soul they have transcends the villages they live in. What they have both accomplished in a short time sets an example of dedication, determination and selflessness. Right now, they're inspiring everyone, including their employees. Thank you very much. <laughs> the next member statement, the member for Orleans. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Abuse of power, the breach of public trust, the exchange of favours for personal or political gain. You may rightly be attributing these sentiments to the government's ongoing Greenbelt corruption scandal, but Mr. Speaker, this may be just the tip of the iceberg. Ten days ago, I wrote the Auditor General of Ontario to investigate this government's unilateral decision to expand the City of Ottawa's urban boundary in 2022. Following a comprehensive review by the City, they added 1,200 hectares in 2020. This was done after extensive consultation and analysis with pub the public, with stakeholders and with experts. A key factor in the city's analysis was the protection and preservation of high-quality farmland as dictated by the provincial policy statement. However, in November of 2022, the former Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing used his ministerial powers to override the city's process and add an additional 654 hectares to the boundary. One area of concern in particular, Mr. Speaker, was an expansion of 37 hectares in Orleans, land that was zoned agricultural resource by the city and protected from development. According to media reporting, in August of 2021, when the property was still designated ag resource, it was purchased for $12.7 million by the Verde Alliance of Companies, a group of companies uh, insinuated in the Integrity Commissioner's most recent report. Meanwhile, this group donated over $12,000 to the Provincial Conservative Party in 2021 and 2022. Mysteriously, a year later, these lines ran Thank you. The next member statement, the member for Brampton East. Thank you, Speaker. It's great to be back in the legislature, and I hope everybody's had a wonderful summer. I know for myself it was full of meaningful community events and a chance for me to connect with my constituents and hear from them for what matters most to them. Speaker, over the last few months, I met with many people in Brampton East, and residents have had great conversations on various topics. However, the one that stood out was most in regards to the rising crime rates and the need for greater bail reform. Speaker, in April of this year, our government announced a $112 million investment towards the development of violent crime bail teams, which included funding to upgrade technology, provided prosecutors with additional resources for complex bail hearings, and bolstered the support uh, for OPP repeat offender parole squad. Speaker, despite our government's great work thus far, we collectively need to do more. As parliamentarians are back in session across the country, I urge our federal members to make the necessary changes and push forward with meaningful bail reform. It's important that all governments work together to make Ontario a safe place for all residents to live, work and play. Speaker, our government and our Premier will always work hard to keep Ontarians safe, healthy and prosperous. I look forward to our government's continuous efforts to urge the federal government to collaboratively achieve strong and meaningful bail reform. Thank you, Speaker.
Thank you very much. The next member statement, the member for Oxford. Thank you very much, Speaker. It's a pleasure to rise in the legislature today just to congratulate three exceptional athletes who made big news in Oxford over the summer. First, I'd like to congratulate two students at Woodstock Collegiate, Arlen Smith and Natalie Dodd, who were both on Team Canada at the 16th wow. World Dragon Boat Championships. Oh, wow. Arlen is from Embro and has competed in World Championships since she was 12. Natalie is from a farm just outside of Hexham and has been interested in dragon boating since she was nine. They both did an amazing job coming home with three golds and five yeah, silver yeah. medals. Wow. Team Canada also won the World Championship, winning 52 gold medals, the most medals overall. Also like to congratulate Folden's native, Ella Shelton, as well, who will be leaving Oxford for the Big Apple after being drafted to the New York team for the new Professional Women's Hockey League. Wow. Previously, Ellen played on NCCA for Clarkson University, was part of two Canadian World Championship teams, and won a gold medal in the 2022 Winter Olympics. Ella was New York's first pick in the draft, and she was drafted fourth overall. Congratulations again to these three amazing athletes. Your hard work and perseverance has paid off, and you are an inspiration to the young girls in Oxford who dream to compete in professional sports one day. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning.